Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God. Let me say good morning to everyone. First of all, giving God all the honor and praise. It's good to see you all this morning. Amen. Oh, y'all could put a thumbs up or something and say, let me know you hear me something. Amen. It's good to see you this morning. Amen. Huh? I wouldn't be nowhere else but in the arms of God right now. Amen. It is an honor this morning. Uh, y'all have heard the word in, in, in 1 Peter 1 and 18 to 21. And y'all know I like to read it out of the ERV. It makes it a little bit more plainer. And then it, it sometimes it makes it even comical this morning. But uh, this morning, I'm going to read it out of ERV for you this morning. And it says, you know that in the past, the way you were living was useless. Hmm? It was a way of life you learned from those who lived before you. But you were saved from that way of living. You were bought, but not with things that run like gold and silver. You were bought with the precious blood of Christ's death. He was a peer. He was a pure and perfect sacrificial lamb. Christ was chosen before the world was made, but he was shown to the world in these last times for you. Verse 21, you believe in God through Christ. God is the one who raised him from the dead and gave honor to him. So your faith and your hope are in God. Amen, amen, and amen. We give honor to God this morning as I decrease and he gets all the increase from me. And we thank him this morning for you all. Thank him for best being on the, for, him, for being him and him alone this morning. If I had to give you a subject this morning, it would sound something like this. He got up, but it's time for a change. Hmm? He got up, but it's time for a change. He didn't get up for us to still stay in that same old spot, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. He didn't do that. He got up so we can change. Amen. First Peter and first Peter, it says, um, uh, whew, let me let me take a deep breath here. <sighs> Sell down here in a minute. Lord have mercy. It, it seemed like it's been it seemed like it's been a while, but it ain't. It's just another 30 days for me. Another 30 minutes, another 30 seconds that God has done something new in this old vessel. Amen. And, and in 1 Peter, it, it says, uh, just a little uh, note for you. It said the, the price, the price, the price, how much he paid for you. Christ paid on the cross before we were saved. Our lives were empty and meaningless. Hmm? It was vain, y'all. We were living in vain. But now they are full of happy thoughts about him. Our salvation was not purchased with money. It, was took, it took the blood of Jesus Christ, the spotless lamb of God. And John 1 and 29, it tells us that his death was planned by God ages before we were even on the scene. Hmm? Unless you just 2,000 plus years old, hey, <laughs> it was happening for us. Amen. And it's, it goes on to say, his death was planned by God ages before we were on, even born. Yet God in his grace 
included us in that plan. Hmm? Before we were even on our mother's and father's mind, God was already thinking about us. Hmm? Ordering in our steps. How grateful we should be and what better way is there for us to show our gratitude than to surrender our all to him. Amen. Have you surrendered your all to him lately? Have you told him, have your way in my life, Lord God? It all belongs to you anyway. So have your way. Amen. If you haven't made that statement, you ought to think about it sometime. Think about it when you're going through some stuff that you just can't see your way out of. To God, have your way. And watch him move that stuff. Watch him give you a clear vision to, hey, this ain't nothing but him. Amen. Now, Pastor delivered a, a word last Sunday. I'm telling you, I'm still gleaming off of it. It was a, a to me, it was a right now word, ladies and gentlemen. It, it really was. Any other day, uh, Christmas, holiday, Mother's Day, y'all know the sermons already. Y'all know them. But he delivered one that wasn't expected by the usual saints. Amen. He didn't talk about the rising, the uh, well, he mentioned it, but he didn't he didn't stay that long the the rising of what Christ did for us. He didn't talk about no Easter baskets, no Easter dresses, no Easter haircuts, none of that stuff. He gave you pure word. Huh? It's time for the church to get right. No, that wasn't the title. That wasn't his title. But I'm just telling you, it's time for the church to get right. We didn't heard for centuries and centuries. Uh, God, Jesus is gonna be here soon. Y'all better get right. You better get right. He's gonna be here soon. My daddy used to say it all the time. And I'm like, Daddy, when he coming? Huh? He ain't got here yet. When he coming? Is he going to come get us? And didn't have a clue what I was saying. But to God be the glory, now I do. Because I had to change. I had to change from my old way of thinking, my stinking thinking, as we call it these days. And I had to seek God for myself. Amen. It, it wasn't a short journey. But to God be the glory, it was a journey. Amen. And I'm telling you, I can't stop loving him for the journey. I can't stop praising him for the time spent with him. To know him is to love him. Amen. But we're going to go on because this, this ain't got good to me this morning. God didn't change my message three or four times, you know. I, I thank Pastor and my the rest of those that labor with me in the gospel for, for praying with me this day, for understanding this little girl here. She, she done been through some stuff, but I thank God I ain't where I used to be. Amen. I thank God that I, I have changed so many times. Every time I think I got it right. Here come another thing. We'll, we'll see. Now, that, that ain't working with the new you, so you might as well change again. And that's what change is all about. Today's message, it, it, it hit home for me. If it don't work for me, I can't give it to you. Amen. If, I, if, if it don't work for me, I can't sit here and, and tell you this says the Lord, because I ain't tried it for myself. But see, this word today, I didn't try it. I didn't live it several times over. And then there's, what else can I say about it? Amen. But we're going on. And um, 
he spoke about the church. Some want to come to church, but they don't know what Easter and Christmas and Mother's Day sermon is going to be. They already know what it's going to be. Don't, don't you, you done heard them so many times over the years. You should know them by heart. But he delivered a message that wasn't in that bracket. Huh? Well taken. It's time for a change, saints. It ain't no time to keep doing the same old thing. Looking to see who got on what. Who got the best hairdo? Who got the baddest suit on? Who who, who got the uh, what we say uh, dressed to a T? It ain't that time no more, saints. It's not that time. And yeah, I said ain't. No, nah? cause sometimes you gotta hit you where it where it gonna hurt it. We said ain't before we went to school and, and, and learned how to say it's not. Huh? So I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to take you there for a minute. You know, uh, just to see where I am today, to see where my husband is today. And my God, what a change. To even see where our children are today. What a change. And we know, I know, that it wasn't nobody but God. Amen. Just like you should know the changes you'd have made in your life, ain't nobody did them but God. Because we can't we can't do it on our own self. We can't if we do it, we're gonna be right back there tomorrow. Asking you ourselves, where is the change? What happened? What happened when Jesus gave up his life for my life? There was a change supposed to happen. And that change should not have been for one hour. It should not have been for one day. If you know what he did for you, it should be a life experience, amen? He gave up all he had for just for me, just for you. And it should not have lasted just for 30 days, just for 30 minutes. It should be for ever, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it should be forever. Amen. Hmm? You, 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 you got, what can I say? You, Glow, you looking good this morning. Pastor, Donna, Sheila, 51, looking good on you, girl. But that ain't got nothing to do with what Jesus Christ did for you. Hmm? Jesus paid the ultimate price for us. And that price was not for us to sit around and say, oh my God, Cliff, that's a nice pink shirt you got on. Dr. Smith, man, you look mighty sharp today. Huh? And everybody else, man, y'all sure you're looking good today. I don't care what you're feeling like, but you're looking good to me. Huh? It wasn't about that. He died. He got up so you can make a change in your life. He got up. Not we. He did, and he did it for God. God, they need some help down there, he said. Can you just imagine that? God, they need some help, Daddy. I need to go down there and show them how to live. I need to go down there and show them what to do. 
I know I had to go down there and show them how to praise you in spite of what they're going through. <laughs> because as long as they don't stop in the going through, they all right. But time you stop in the going through, you got problems. You got more problems than you can handle. But if you keep going through, ladies and gentlemen, Huh? He got you covered. There ain't no stopping in him. When you're going through, keep going through. Don't let don't let what you're going through stop you and give you hiccups and, and headaches and heartburns and all other stuff. Keep going through. Because you didn't stop. He didn't stop. He went all the way to the cross. And in three days, he got up for you and for me, for them and for them. He got up. Pastor didn't get up. Apostle didn't get up. But he got up for all of us. Huh? It ain't no short changing it. It's about time we stop living, as the scripture says, off of those things we were taught. Get in this word, pick it up, and read it for yourself. It tells you how to dress. It tells you how to talk. It tells you what to say to folks. It tells you everything in your life that you need. Tell you how to work for folks. Tell you how to lift them up and pray for them. Amen. So what's our hang up? Why are we so busy at the year at the yellow light sitting there? Waiting on the red light to come. Waiting on the green light to come. And we still sitting there. I, I can't do this. I can't do this. Uh, it ain't you doing it. It's him in you. Huh? He ain't stopping. He wants you to move, but you know what? He's so gentle, he ain't much pushing himself on you. He's so gentle, he just said, I'm going to give you chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. I'm going to keep turning, I'm going to keep telling my daddy, I died for that. I gave my life for that. Give them another chance, Daddy. I gave my life for that. They're going to be all right. They're going to get it sooner or later. I gave my life for that. Amen. This this is, like I say, this, this got good to me this morning when I finally went to sleep. It was time to get up again. But I feel good. When, when you know that you are in God's hand and he got you, you can go to sleep. I could have went to sleep five minutes ago and still woke up with all this joy and happiness and, and just gleaming all over the place. You might not see it, but I know it's there. Huh? You not might not see, because you see, you're looking at this screen and this old dumb glass between us. But when you see me in person, my husband said, oh, girl, you all right? Of course I'm all right. Because God got me. God got me. He might have changed that message sometime. Because that's his will. It's not mine. Amen. Now, listen, I just, Lord have mercy. It's time for a change, church. He got up. He got up. It's time for a change. And the change is getting in the word. The change is not waiting till Sunday when, when pastor uh, going to get up and, and give you a word. You should already have a word in your heart. And what he, and what he delivers it should be matching up with what's already in your heart. Hmm? It shouldn't be waiting 
around saying, okay, I wonder what he's going to preach today. I wonder how long he's going to take today. Uh, I wonder how many times he's going to say that over and over again. Don't say it until God tells us to stop saying it. It's time for a change. He got up. He got up for us not to sit there and wait for him to do it all. It's not like that. He said if we made one step, he didn't made two already. When are you going to move? When are we going to move? Huh? Make that step. I double dog dare you to make a step for him. Huh? Make that step. Move out on in him. Put away all that old stuff. That's right, Cliff. Change your hearts and change your mind. Let it be all about him. Because he did it all for you. Amen. Amen. It's, it's, uh, are, you, are you afraid of change? Are you afraid to, to stand before his people and pray? Are you, are you afraid to, to, to do this for him? Are you afraid to get before him for a word for yourself, most of all, before you can get it for, you, for anybody else? Are you afraid of a change that's coming? It's not going to take long, saints. You know, John the Baptist, all he had to do say was repent for the kingdom of heaven. What are you saying? What are you doing for the kingdom? Huh? The kingdom is waiting on you. Them folks out there that, that, that don't know God is waiting on us. That lighthouse light just shining and shining and shining, waiting on us. But what we doing? What you doing? Sitting there. Waiting on bastard to do everything. <coughs> Shoot. Waiting on Sister Donna to, to feed all those folks, clothe all those people. Mm -hmm. Waiting on Sister Glow and Sister Sheila to sing. What's wrong with your voice? Mm -hmm. What? <coughs> Excuse me. Amen. What? Are you afraid of? Huh? We, we, we're not first graders anymore. I was first, when I was first grade, my, my older sister's classroom was right across there, and I used to be crying all the time. The teacher finally got a hold of what I was doing, and she closed the door. If you're going to do this thing, you got to do it for yourself. Huh? Ain't nobody else can do it for you. What are you waiting on? Huh? What change are you going to make? Are you going to still sit there and hold your head and say, well, apostle got to do this? No. No. Apostle ain't got to. He made a change for himself. What changes are you going to make for yourself? It's a change thing. It's not a chain game, but it's a change thing. Find yourself. Can you find yourself in the word? We used to ask that question all the time. And I'm like, I ain't in the word. But when I came across Job one day, I said, oh, my God. There I am, right there. I didn't say it. I did this and I did that. And God had to ask me, where were you? When I hung this stuff, huh? Y'all know the story. Where were you? When he hung the, the stars in the sky. 
Where were you when he called forth the light from the darkness? Hmm? Where were you? It's a change thing, folks, today. Who gonna be willing to make that change? Huh? Folks and going on to heaven? Uh, uh, wait, let me change that. See, cause the Bible say they, they asleep. They waiting for Jesus return. The dead in Christ will rise first. And if you still here, Everybody else going to be caught up later. So what are we waiting on? They in their resting place from all this we go through down here. They resting from all the crime that's going on, all the killing that's going on. What are we doing? Are we letting it go on? Are we praying about it? God show us what to do. God, show us how to help these young folks from killing each other. Show us, God. Show us how to stop this prejudice, God. Show us how to stop this police brutality, Lord. Come on, y'all. We, we got the knowledge. We got the one that made it all. The one that knows it all. And he waiting on you to ask him. What do I do, God? How do I approach these people? You've been learning how to be a witness lately. How are you going to be that witness to them? Are you going to bag off every time one of them come up into you? I hope not. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm? I pray not. I really do. I pray you have the boldness of Jesus Christ in you that can say, hey, hold up. Wait a minute. Let me put my foot in it. This is how it's going down. Huh? This is what you're supposed to be doing. Huh? This is how it's going to be. And everything else, we're going to leave at the back. Huh? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> my God. I didn't got all off my notes. I'm, I'm, I'm like pastor last week. It, it, it's tough when you write all this down and, and you can't keep up with it. But that's what you call let God have his way. He know what he put in you. So you just let him speak through you. He got up. So I wouldn't have to sit down no more. He got up. So I wouldn't have to ask him why, Lord, no more. He got up. So I wouldn't have to say, God, why they hating on me? God, why they looking at me like that? God, I didn't do nothing to them. He got up. Huh? So I wouldn't have to say, well, Lord, you know, I'm so dark that, uh, 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 and I can't do nothing with this. But you know what? They used to tell me all the time, I look like my two brothers then, and because they dark and, and got them big old jaws like I do. I said, but you know what? At least I'm looking like somebody. But you know what is even better? When I found God, as I look like Jesus, huh? What better person to look like than Jesus? Huh? He is my all in all. He is my everything. He better to me than my husband is. He better to me than my children will ever be. He's better to me than you will ever be to me. I wouldn't trade him. I love him so. I love him so. I'm not going to even try to find who I was. I'm going to save it for next time, probably. Because, see, this thing got good to me. When I, I hollered, he got up last week, 
I was like, God, are you sure you want me to say that? He got up. He said, that's all I want you to say. And I read the scripture. He got up. Not me. Not my dad. Not my mom. He got up. Y'all be blessed. Until next time. He got up. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.